Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we'll be creating a simple dissolve shader using Shader Graph, and then we'll be writing a script to control the player's health, which will then in turn control the parameters in the shader. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So in Unity, I've just got a simple scene set up and I've got a player here, which I downloaded from Mixamo. Okay, I can put this link in the description for you guys to go get the model if you want. It's just because it looks better than a capsule for doing this test. And this player has joints and surface, they call it, okay? And these are two different parts of the uh, player that have different materials, which means we have to make sure we apply this shader and material to both parts. We have the joints, which is the kind of darker red, and then we have the surface, which is all the lighter red stuff. And currently these are using the built-in lit shader, but we need to replace it with our own shader that we'll make in Shader Graph right now. So to create the shader, we'll right click in our project and make a new shader, PBR shader. And we'll call it shader graph underscore player. Okay, we can open that up and I can make this full screen. Now this isn't gonna be a full shader graph tutorial where I explain exactly what every node does and how to use it you know, in every single situation. It's just gonna be specific for what we're doing here. And let's first of all start setting up our parameters. So one we're going to need is a vector one, which is the same as just a normal float. And we're gonna call this health, okay? Now the first part is just the name you see in the inspector and the, the name you see in here. And then this reference is what it is in code. So if we want to change this value in code later, we have to give it a string, a name that we can remember. So I'm gonna call it underscore health, okay? The default value of health is one. So I want to make this work for any character in a game, regardless of whatever their max health is. So this is gonna be effectively a percentage between zero and one. So one means full health, zero means no health. I'll make it a slider in the inspector between zero and one. And that's all that. Next, we're gonna to want to allow the person to change the color just of the, of the material. So we'll just make a simple color, expose like this, just how it is, that's fine. And another color for the edge, which is going to be the kind of glow effect as the thing dissolves. If you don't give it an edge, it kind of looks a bit weird. Um, it's just like a very sharp cutoff. So we're going to give it an edge, and we'll make this another color. But the color is going to we're going to make it glow. So let's call it edge color. Okay. I'm going to actually use the British spelling of color, like so. Okay. And this we're not actually changing this in code, so we can leave it with the, as the default name. Um, let's change the mode to HDR which allows it to have glow. And we'll, we'll also just leave it as default colors for now, it's fine. And these are our three parameters that we're going to be using in our graph. Okay, let's start making the graph. So first thing to do, we'll just chuck the color straight into the albedo. That's what gives the material its main color. Then for the dissolve effect, we want some randomness. So we're gonna use the simple noise node. And it's a bit too grainy right now, so we'll turn this down to maybe 20. Okay, and I'm gonna plug that straight into the alpha, the alpha being the transparency. Now. For this to actually have certain parts of the mesh which is visible and certain parts which isn't visible, then we actually need to control this alpha clip threshold value. Okay, so what we're gonna do, let's just reset that back to zero. We want to use our health to control that, but rather than plugging our health straight in, uh, the problem is right now, what it would do is when the player's full health, the mesh wouldn't be visible, and when they're dead, it would be completely visible. We need to invert that. So we can use the one minus node to invert that, okay. And then we can plug that into here. The next thing we want to do is make the glow effect. So we want the glow effect to effectively be the same as the, the noise here, but with a slight bit around the edges. So what we can actually do is we can take this value and we can add a very small number to it. So maybe something like 0 0.02. Okay, you can tweak this if you want. And this little extra bit, we will then plug into a step node. And it's very hard to see right now without tweaking the value. So maybe if I go to health and we say the value is 0 0.5, here's what we get, okay? So this is what the actual dissolve effect is gonna be like. So if I, I can't actually just drag this number around in here, but you can see if I go 0 0.1, then 0.2, if I keep going up, it'll slowly become more noticeable. You can actually see down at the bottom here, the preview, okay? So if I go 0 0.5, this is you know roughly visible. Some of it is there, some of it isn't. So to do the glow, we want to take this, we want to put this into the emission, okay? So that'll give you this white line around. Now this, this add value here is gonna determine the thickness of that. So if we put 0.5, it's really big, six, seven, eight, you can go, go bigger, it's up to you. But we want it to have a color of our choice. So the way you do color is by multiplying. So we have our edge color over here. We want to multiply this, okay, by the output of this step. And the problem is now that obviously 
um, over here we need to put this into the emission as opposed to the step going straight in which will actually give it the color and currently our edge color is black so let's make it red and we can even increase the brightness to make it glow now we don't we don't see the glow in here actually so let's do that in the editor in a minute but the point is this is it it works now so if we go back over to health imagine we're full health okay we just look normal imagine we're nearly dead on point three we basically disappeared but if we're like half health then we've got this around now the example of controlling it with the player's health is just purely an example you guys could use this for maybe invisibility so as the player cloaks you change the cloak value from one to zero or something and then obviously the player goes from being cloaked to uncloaked um, so let's leave the default value as one save the asset and we can get out of this somehow i'm kind of stuck in here let's uh, not maximize there we go go back into the scene and now we can start applying the shader to the materials we're using on the player so the way we do that is we go to where our materials are so i've got them both here okay and what we need to do is we need to first of all copy this color so we can keep it and we want to change the shader it's using to player what do i call it player shader graph player and then i change the color to be this and then the edge color to be what i want now notice how when i drag the slider that material starts doing the fade effect now i can see the edge color here let's increase the brightness there we go looks pretty cool okay so these are the settings i want now this health value should be changed in code and we want it to change at the same time that we're doing the same thing on the on the joints okay so let's copy this hdr color so it's, it's just 191 and let's say four so, so, so i remember what it is 200 204 we'll go with that uh so let's go to the other material copy this change it to player so paste that color in and change this to 204 on the intensity so now we can do the exact same thing here okay so now we just want to change both these values in code at the same time as the player's health changes so i've made two scripts that i've put on the player one is the health script and one is the health dissolver so i can separate the two things out let's quickly write the health script first so the health script has a serialized field private int for the max health so we can set that in the editor we also have an event that we raise that passes through two ints where the first int is the current health and the second one is the max health and then we also store the current health as a private int we have a set health method that takes in the value of health to set we set it and then we raise the event okay so we pass through as i said the current health and the max health whenever the health changes of course in the start method we set the health to be our max health that also raise the event to make sure that when we write the health dissolver script at the start it will have the health set to be max for the deal damage method we will take in a damage amount to deal and all we do is we set the health to be the max between the current health minus damage amount or zero this is just a one line way to basically uh, reduce the health and make sure it doesn't go below zero if it does if it does go below zero then zero will be bigger than this meaning it will be set to zero this math f max i use all the time it means set this value uh, to be the biggest number the maximum number out of the two parameters so if zero is bigger it'll do that otherwise it'll do these two so yeah this is just a quick simple health script obviously nothing happens when the player dies that doesn't really matter now we just want a way to visually use this we're going to use this health change event so whenever the health changes the health dissolver will listen in for that and it will adjust the materials health value accordingly so we need reference to the health script obviously to subscribe to the event and we need reference to all the renderers because we, we could actually just do this in code and say in the start method get all renderers in the children but i've decided to just pass them in an inspector there's only two anyway uh, so we need the renderer for the the joints and for the surface for the rest of the player okay and we want to actually make this effect smooth you could just make it snappy but it doesn't look very good so we're going to store the actual dissolve value and the target dissolve value so we'll basically reduce this immediately but then we'll always be setting the shader value to be this and this one will slowly lurk between whatever it is right now and this target value it's a good way to have it smoothly change when we take damage rather than just snapping because it'll look bad otherwise and what we need next is every frame we want to lurk this value as i said so we want to make sure the current value keeps going towards the target value and then i've just chosen this arbitrary amount here two two seems to work pretty well it's a good speed i can tweak the speed by making it a parameter and putting in inspector and then I multiply by time to delta time so that it smoothly goes each frame. Otherwise, if we had a high frame rate or a slow frame rate, it would you know, fade at a different speed. It would be a bit weird. And then all we do is we loop over those renderers and we, in the renderers material, we set float. Okay, so you set float when you're just setting a value. And this underscore health was the uh, reference 
a string that we set in the shader graph, okay? So I set it to be underscore health, so we can use that here. And then here we go, the value of the float is the current dissolve value. We then make a callback method for when the health changes. It takes in two ints because we have to do that, okay? And all it does is whenever the health changes, we set the target value and we have to cast to a float here because when you divide two ints, you're not gonna get a fraction. You're not gonna get a float back, you're gonna get an int back, int back, sorry. So you have to cast at least one of these two values to floats so if you cast float for health, then this will actually return a float between zero and one based on your health. And the final thing to do is just subscribe and unsubscribe from the events. So we just stick in, in on enable and on disable. We subscribe to on health changed and unsubscribe from on health changed, calling this method. So the whole flow of things is I press spacebar, we deal 10 damage, it calculates how much health we should be on, it sets the health, it raises the event saying the health has changed, then the health dissolver is subscribed to that event. So when the health does change, it passes those values in here. We set the target value. And then every single frame, we set the current value to be closer and closer and closer to the target value. So we'll smoothly change this health uh, parameter in all of the, these materials to get closer to this value, which means as we take damage, we'll slowly start fading away. Back over in Unity, we can drag the health script into the health dissolver. And we need two renderers. So let's drag in beta joints and beta surface, the two skin mesh renderers. I'll save to the prefab. Okay, and now we should be ready to go. So let's give it a test. Okay, so if I start hitting space, it'll start dissolving. So hit space once. Okay, you might not notice much because it's still at 90%, you know, visible. But if I hit it again, it's now 80%. Okay, there you go. You can start seeing the dissolving effect. I hit it again, it does even more. Notice how it smoothly uh, transitions rather than just snapping. It looks a lot better. Hit space again. I'm starting to fade away even more and more and more and more until finally, one more time, I'm gone. Okay, I'm dead. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Give me some more video ideas. I might do a poll coming up on the community tab so that you guys can vote on what you want to see coming up. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, John Selig, Liz Kimber, Ansikan, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Ellen, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Samran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, and Rene. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our Udemy course and our website. If you could check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.